The next method is the units of output. Oops. The idea of calculating depreciation this way is the idea that the more we use the asset, the less value it becomes, right? The more you use a pizza oven, okay, that might be a bad example. The more you use a, the more you use a pan, the less value it becomes, valuable it becomes, right? The more you use it, eventually it's going to break. The more you use it, <clears throat> some assets, and this this works. Um, this works for some assets and it doesn't work for others, right? Um, mainly because in this method, we're calculating the depreciation by the amount of output that asset has produced, right? So if a machine can only produce 30 widgets, we can calculate how much depreciation to deduct from that asset based on how many widget it produce, produces. And then after it's produced 30 widgets, it's technically written off by that point. In our example here, and how sorry, how we calculate that is we take the cost minus the salvage value, so twelve thousand in this case, twelve thousand minus the scrap value, so two thousand. There we go, and then we divide it by the estimated units of output over its useful life. Okay, remember back to straight line when we divided by useful life. It's the same idea here, except that the useful life is not being communicated in years. It's being communicated in estimated units of output. So the, our Jurassic Park truck, tour bus, has a range of 200,000 kilometers. So it's only going to be useful for around 200,000 kilometers, not a Honda. Okay, We'll say it's a, I don't know, but it's only got 200,000 uh, kilometers worth of use to it. We then multiply that by the annual units of output to get the amount of depreciation. So you do this piece first and then do the amount of depreciation per unit. So if we do this calculation first, so uh, 12,000 minus uh, 2,000 equals 10,000, 10,000 divided by uh, 200,000 kilometers gives us 0 0.05. What this means is that we are deducting or calculating depreciation by 5 cents per kilometer. We then, let's say in year one, our tour bus traveled 40,000 kilometers. So year one, the bus traveled 40,000 kilometers in our Jurassic Park theme thing. Okay, so 40,000 kilometers. Just doing circles and circles and circles. We take that 40,000 kilometers, multiply it by the amount of depreciation per kilometer, and it gives us our depreciation expense or the amount of the depreciation for year one. So multiply it by 0 0.05, and we get what? It's actually on the board here. We get 2,000. So we are going to depreciate $2,000 in depreciation in year one based on five cents per uh, depreciation of five cents per kilometer, having driven 40,000 kilometers. It's just multiplying the rate per kilometer or per usage by the, uh, the unit of production or the unit of output. Another example might be Let's say, I'll just give a quick example here. Let's say we buy a pizza oven. Let's say we buy the pizza oven for 50 grand. Let's also say at this pizza's, pizza oven's useful life, we'll probably get like $5,000 for it uh, in spare parts for other pizza ovens, right? Okay, so that's the original value, the scrap value. Now we have to identify how many pizzas can this pizza oven make? Okay, so how many, okay, so you buy, let's say it's a used pizza oven, uh, and we'll, you know, it'll make us, 
it'll over the course of its life it'll be able to produce 500,000 pizzas so this pizza oven cost us 50 grand we'd get five thousand dollars for it in scrap value and this uh, pizza oven will over the course of its useful life will produce 500,000 pizzas that makes me a happy guy um, okay so next step are 50 grand minus uh, five grand five thousand divided by 50 sorry uh, 500,000 could someone do the math for me and tell me sorry 0 0.09 0 0.09 Sorry, brother, just can hear it. So that is nine cents of depreciation per pizza. Okay, so let's say, so this is nine cents of depreciation per pizza. For pizza. There we go. Now let's say in year one, that I've, after the first year, I've had this pizza oven, I figure out that I've made 100,000 pizzas. Okay? I'm hungry. So I've made 100,000 pizzas after the first year, and I have to calculate depreciation. I take 100,000, multiply it uh, by 0 0.09, and I get what? 9,000. That means I'm depreciating my pizza oven by $9,000 in the first year. Yeah. And then the next year, the amount of depreciation is dependent, just like the first year, on the amount of pizzas that I make. In our bus example, the amount of depreciation is dependent on how many kilometers it drives. Like for the sway mass, like we calculate until then, we call the same, like same thing for the depreciation. It's the same thing and all the So more I mean, kind of like. No. So straight line depreciation, the depreciation amount will be equal for every single year. Double declining balance is a percentage of the net value. The units of output are dependent on the amount uh, by the amount of use of the asset. So it changes. Straight line, depreciation is always the same amount. Double declining balance, it changes per, from period to period. So does units of output. So it changes based on those two methods. And again, the method that you want to use is up to you. There's benefits to both. There's sustainable long-term benefit from, uh, from the straight line method, but also an earlier benefit, an earlier higher benefit from using uh, accelerated methods like double declining balance. Next one and possibly the most uh, 